we going to learn about few uh, quantities. These quantities are uh, elastic section modulus, elastic neutral axis, <coughs> plastic section modulus, plastic neutral axis, shape factors, five names. Okay, each names one by one, I will explain them. So the first one, no. So you can see uh, you can see right. It's okay. Forgot that. All right. So. Uh, five quantities, as I mentioned, that we're going to talk about. Elastic section modulus, elastic neutral axis, plastic section modulus, plastic neutral axis, and uh, safe factors. Safe factors, right? That's what the name. Step factors. This is a new topic, by the way, this year. We don't have this topic last year. It was column bucklings and was boring and all, but this was very helpful when you do the CIV 3 sd 2 in structure steel designs. Those uh, definition and those parameters will be helpful when you do SD2 with us. So therefore, we included these topics for you. Now, first of all, what's the topic today that we're going to talk about today? That if you take a beam, right? And 50, 60 years ago, the engineers designed a beam just when it's yield. Right? So when they apply the load in this top fiber, I'm talking about these extreme fibers, when they reach the yield strength, then they said, that's it. This is our design. And that's the extreme capacity. There's a, there's a failure. That's what they said. So in that case, they need to design the cross section massive. If you see the structure, old structures, they are huge. The cross section of the old structures are, 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 are very big. But now with a lot of research and all, we can say that why don't you use the plastic strength as well? Because this um, uh, beam can carry the plastic strength as well. So therefore, the concept of plastic section modulus comes across. OK, so therefore, now these uh, new structures, you will see the cross section is significantly reduced. We have a lot of uh, cost saving, right? So that's the that's the overall um, uh, theory that where we use that one in the real real world, that all the theories or all the designs that we do based on plastic. But we need to learn that elastic one as well, how the elastics work. And the safe factors going to tell us if you use yield one, how much uh, strength that you're not using, it, how much capacity you are uh, extracting if you are using plastic. So that's the safe factors going to tell us if it is 50% extra, 60% extra, and so on. That's going to take uh, till the safe factor. So let's let's uh, let's give you some theory first before because the numbers and all the calculations would be very simple. Okay, so. Let's say I have. Let's say I have. Typically, we have uh, this I beam in the steel. You can see this I beam, right? So what happens when you load? This is I beam, by the way. Let's say this is support here, and this is the load here. And if I take the cross sections like this, this is the beam support here support here loading applying on here that's i draw on this side so that is the beam support here are the two end and this one and if i take the cross section i can see this everyone okay if i take these cross sections and if i look from this side then i can see that cross section so if i look from here i can see if i look from your side from your side i can see this line okay everyone okay now now when I apply this loading, then this beam will going to bend. So when they bend, they will deform. So here, there is a neutral axis. There is zero force. The neutral axis is the meeting point for compression and tension, right? So when you, when I, when I bend this one, when I bend this one, so this red line, if you can imagine, that is the meeting point of compression and tension. So if I just bend, I, it's very hard to bend in that fashion. But you can see this tension, this is compression, and this in between, this line becomes straight. It will not change. You can see the length of, let's say, this is 
60 centimeters. If you turn this one, it will stay 60 centimeters. Not much change. It will not extracting, not uh, compressing. But this part is ex extracting, right? You can see it's extending. This one is changing. So that's what I draw. That extreme side is changing. These extreme fibers are changing significantly. And then when they comes in the middles, they are less changing. So that is a straight, right? So in the old days, they say that when these top fibers, top fibers meaning these fibers and these fibers, when they reach the yield point, let's say they reach yield strength or yield straight, you stop there. So what happens about this, all the materials that are sitting here, we have not utilized their yield strength. Do you agree with me? Because when this top portion reached the yield strength, then we said that is the failure. But still, it's it has not uh, used all these materials sitting underneath between those two extreme points. So this plastic analysis concept comes and say that why don't you just use all the materials, and that is your plastic strength beyond the yield point. And that's so when this happens this is called plastic moments because you are applying the moment to cause this extreme fiber to the yield point that is called yield moment and if you keep applying the load you continue increasing the load in that case the whole cross sections will reach the yield point this point this point this point this point this material will get the reach the yield strength that moment that will going to reach is called a plastic moment. Everyone understand the loads that you are keep applying, keep applying, keep applying, and that will deform the whole cross sections, these parts, these parts, everything deform, and that moment is called plastic moment. Ill moment, when you apply the keep, you keep increasing the load, and when you see this one, ooh, that's reached the ill point, stop, that is your ill moment. Plastic moment, you keep increasing the load, and that's reached the plastic moment, okay? And the safe factors, I think, safe factors is just a ratio of plastic moments over yield moments. Okay. Now, to calculate the yield moment, you know this bending equation, sigma is equal to my over i. Have you seen that? No. Okay. I think mechanics of solid, we done that. So, when I have this bar and when I pull it, Pull it like this. Let's say this is cross sections. Let's say pull this one both side. Then I can say have a axial stress. Axial stress is equal to load over these cross sections. Do you understand that? Axial stress, everyone agree? When I have this pull, then how much pull divided by this cross section, this length times width? Axial stress, simple. Okay, if someone said, can you calculate axial stress? You can calculate very simple, but instead of pulling, I done this. Do you see the difference that I pull? That was axial stress, load over area, no problem. But when I this bending, this has still stress, right? But that was different stresses. So in that case, we have bending stress, moment, how much moment I'm applying, right? With this hand to bend, that is M. Moment of inertia I, cross sections moment of inertia, you know moment of inertia resistance against the bending, that is I, depending on how the cross sections is made, how the materials is distributed from this axis. So that is your I. And the distance Y is the distance from the neutral axis to where you want to find the bending, bending stress. If you want to find the bending stress just underneath that fiber, you take that Y distance. So the distance Y is the one that is just going to tell where you want to find the bending stress from the neutral axis. Everyone understand these three quantities? And this equation has a limitation that these equations valid only in the elastic region. When it is in within the elastic, so yield moment, then these two equations are brother sisters. They, they like each other. But if they go to plastic, this equation is not valid. If you reach this, keep applying, then these bending stress equations cannot be used in that calculations. So far, so good. So in that case, if I if I reverse that, bending stress is equal to m over iy. Can I write like that? Right. 
I just put that Y down. Right? Everyone okay? So just put that Y underneath same thing. There is nothing, nothing changed. We are talking about the yield wall. So this bending stress, let's say yield stress. I'm talking about only the theory when 50 years ago, when your some were grandfathers or engineers, they do this design. That when they reach the extreme one, the bending stress reach the yield stress. And please note that bending stress is only and only at that particular top and bottom. I'm not talking about all these other materials in this Dale port, only the tiny bit of top and tiny bit of bottom. So that is sigma B, I can write sigma Y. Do you agree with me? Okay, because you and I have this bending stress, this bending stress at the extreme points are, 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 are sigma Y, that is yield stress. And I can write M and this is Z. Let's say Z equal to I over Y. So far so good. I just replaced one quantity I over Y as a Z, the symbol Z. Now this Z, we call it elastic section modulus. Customs that I'm trying to explain. Elastic section modulus. Do you understand? That is just a fancy name, elastic section modulus. Elastic work on because we are working within elastic. Section modulus, it is pro quantity that is related to section and modulus, I over Y. Everyone okay now? I over Y. And the unit for this one is millimeter to power four and millimeter, so that would be millimeter cube. Okay, everyone okay now? So if you want to calculate the section modulus, that's, that's where you're gonna use it. You see, if you want to, let's say I put this one as a yield moment, right? Because as I mentioned, the moment required to cause the extreme fibers to yield is a yield moment because we replace this one by yield. So if someone asks you to calculate yield moment, you said uh, sigma y times by z. Okay, so far so good. So this is your yield moment this is your ill stress and that is your elastic section modulus so far so good any questions so if it is too fast or nothing you tell me if it is too fast right so if someone asks you to calculate ill moments Yield strain times by the elastic section modulus, elastic section modulus I over Y, and that is denoted by Z. Australian standards, different books use different symbols. American use S, British use Z, Australian use Z, we stick with Z. That is not my symbols. Australian standards are using Z. So I'm just giving you the practice right now that when you come in SD2, you recognize the symbol Z, okay? So therefore, there is no rules. You can use P, Q, R, S, but you need to be consistent, so, okay? But to be make life easy, we will be on the same page and aligning with the next semester subjects. We denote elastic section modulus as a Z. Okay, everything good now? All right, so let's talk about elastic section modulus. That how do we going to find it? So if you want to find the elastic section modulus, let's say, Take a simple cross sections. Let's say this is 100 millimeter by 50 millimeters, let's say. Okay. Then this is a symmetric cross section. So I would say that this is a centroid at, at here, 50 millimeters from here to here, right? And then you can calculate I is equal to BD cubed over 12, which is uh, B is 50, D is um, B is 100 and Y is equal to this 50 where we want to find the extreme. So Z is equal to I over Y. Simple, right? Everyone okay? Right? You done this one in mechanics of solid elastic section modulus. You done I, you done Y and everything. So elastic section modulus, no problems. Of course, we're going to do the practice, but everyone okay now? 
that axis is called elastic neutral axis how do we find this elastic neutral axis you find the centroid you know how to find the centroid there is an equations that centroid y bar that we i think we use a1 y1 plus a2 y2 and continuous on a1 plus a2 you remember these kind of things like if you have an i beam and you take this is one this is two this is three you calculate a1 y1 a2 y2 and so on and you can find the centroid this is the y bar okay so the elastic neutral axis pass from the centroid okay then what is elastic neutral axis when you bend it this is just the line between compression and tension when you cross that line you are stepping into the compression zone if you just come back to that line you're stepping back into the tension zone and compression zone right all good so everyone understand elastic section modulus yield moment elastic neutral axis okay now let's go back to the plastic now plastic section modulus we going to represent it by s capital s okay not my theory just the oscillation standards that we going to use they are using the symbol s okay in your lecture notes might be they are using different symbol but that's okay i'm teaching you this one so you can you can you can use either lecture note or these symbols okay and it has the same unit meter cube now this theory which is this equation is not valid you agree with me right these equations which i put here which is we use in the in here that is not valid why not because this is valid only in the elastic now we are going in the plastic right so this equation is not valid so in that case we can't use these equations uh, iy by the way these equations just using not the full cross sections right we want to use everything we want to use all these one right so we want to use higher section modulus we want to use use higher value so this this value is not valid so what what, what how how we going to find that one so we going to find the uh we going to find the same uh, same equations the plastic moment is equal to il strength times by the uh, s which is this one is a plastic moment this is your yield strength and this is your plastic section modulus now let me introduce the word plastic section modulus what is plastic section modulus now the plastic section modulus is based on let's say this is a cross let's take a typical i beam to calculate a plastic section modulus we need to calculate plastic neutral axis i'm introducing new word plastic neutral axis everyone understand elastic neutral axis it's just passing from the centroid okay now plastic neutral axis what is plastic neutral axis your plastic neutral axis dividing the section into two equal area so if i take the top part uh, let's make it more like a more like a on symmetric part you got it so you have tiny bit up and tiny uh, big one down okay so if you want to draw the line where you have equal area top and bottom that line is a plastic neutral axis i don't want you to remember that one this line is nothing but that is the compression force let's say if you bend this one if you bend this one this compression this one down tensions okay so this compression force let's say top one is compression force and down is a tension force right so compression force compression force equal to tension force this is the equilibrium what happened here all the compression force and tension force you need to draw the line where all the compression force and tension force are equal but if you have a same yield strength because if you have compression force 
yield strain times stress times area area top let's say and yield strain area bottom so if you have a same yield strain throughout then you can sell yield strain on the both sides so you end up with area both side equal you see what i mean therefore i saying that i need the line that will divide the whole cross section into two equal parts that line is called plastic neutral axis okay have you and so far so good elastic section modulus elastic neutral axis uh, yield moment now plastic neutral axis what is plastic neutral axis plastic neutral axis is the line that divide your cross section into two equal area and i'm not saying that area is basically equilibrium between compression and tension force because if you have compression force going tension force going if you have both equal because you need the equilibrium that line will tell us where the compression force and tension force will be equal but if you have yield strain equal for throughout the cross section then you cancel yield strain both side you will have this area equal on on that line that is the plastic neutral axis okay so far so good now if i wants to calculate the section uh, plastic section modulus then what you do let's say this is area num let's say 1 and let's say this is 2 let's say this is 3 another one 4 you see i just divided them into the different sections so you take area times this distance y1 from the centroid of that area to the plastic neutral axis that distance so let's say a1 y1 plus this area to from that centroid to the to the plastic neutral axis a a2 y2 this one let's say a3 y3 and plus a4 y4 that is your plastic section modulus understand that and always take y positive this y down does not mean that negative always take it positive okay so far so good and if you know this as then plastic moment is equal to s times sigma y okay so that is the plastic moment we saw that equations so everyone clear right yes please we have one example in mechanics of solid in in that one of that i remember that where you need to find that x distance i still have that workshop probably you can refer that but i will teach you that don't worry but we have one example in mechanics of solid that ask you to find the neutral axis where the area is equal but for your information is simple don't worry don't worry <laughs> but i just wants to do, go back in your memory okay let's say let's take uh, uh let's take this area let's say you you can find total area here is it possible to find total area you can just have one strip two strip and three strip three rectangle sum them together total area and let's say half total area half and let's say some distance h some random distance h where you going to have a neutral assume so you can find this area with the variable h you can find this you can find this distance with a h and you you know this value and you have h here you can calculate but we will take an examples that will help you okay all right everyone okay now uh, elastic section modulus what else elastic neutral axis uh, bending stress equations plastic neutral axis plastic section modulus plastic moment safe factors is the ratio okay so much so thing but i think when we take the when i take the examples if i don't explain you this one it will feel boring because you, you say what is happening is lot of numbers and you don't know where to start and so on so let's start an example but you can stop me if you don't understand any except your questions that how to find this plastic neutral axis we will take an examples all right first question is very simple you have hollow box beam so and then h equal to 300 mm b equal to 100 mm thickness is 15 mm throughout determining the yield moment 
plastic moment safe factors assuming beam is constructed with yield strength of 210 megapascal so they want you to ask yield moment you know the equation for in moment is a sigma y times the elastic section modulus right that is your yield moment my sigma y is your yield strength given in the questions which is 210 megapascals and z is the elastic section modulus you know where these equations come from right that is the bending equations bending equation sigma b is equal to my on i sigma y is equal to my on y on i sigma y is equal to my i over y and that is your z right so z times sigma y give you my so that is the first one determining the yield moment so for that this one we know this is 210 we need to find this z and what is plastic moment plastic moment same equations this one replaced by this plastic section modulus plastic section modulus and we need to find the safe factors safe factors m equal to mp over my all right so that's the whole recipe that we're going to follow <coughs> how about we just let it go that's the maximum All right, so let's let's move on. Sigma y given z we need to find. Z an equation. Elastic section modulus z is equal to moment of inertia over y. Okay. Now we have a cross sections given to us. Three hundred. You stop me if you don't understand anything, okay? Or if it's too fast, because it will be too late if you put the put the comment at the end saying it's too fast. Uh, you just stop me here, saying where is. Where is these numbers coming from? I can go back and refer it back because I don't have any magic that can just go in your brain and find out what the, your question is or it's too fast. Sometimes I keep talking and I think that, okay, students understand why do I waste the time? I will cover more things. So therefore I sometimes go fast, okay? But you can stop me if it is going too fast. Now first let's calculate why. Why is very simple. What is why by the way? distance from the neutral axis, the extreme fibers. That's why, so we have these extreme fibers. And for this symmetric, we don't need to find a neutral axis here. Otherwise, we need to find a neutral axis. In the other questions, we will find a neutral axis. So in our case, this neutral axis would be 150 millimeters. Everyone agree with that one? And that 150 millimeters will be your Y. Distance from the neutral axis to the extreme fibers. Okay, now I is equal to, we have two rectangles, you can see. One is a big rectangle, which is 300 by 100. Another rectangles, we have two, two rectangles. One is 300 by 100. Second one is, is um, 70 by 30 goes to 70. Do you agree? So let's take this is I1 and this is I2. I, I is equal to I1 minus I2. Do you agree? The whole big I1, take away small I2 will give you the I. Okay. So let's say I1 is equal to B D cubed over 12. B is equal to 100 times 300 cubed over 12. Use the calculator. If 
far so good. I2 similar. Bt cubed over 12. Uh, C1 T times 2 C1 T cubed over 12. So I equal to I1 minus I2. <clears throat> you can stop me if you don't understand. Calculating moment of inertia. What is moment of inertia? Resistance to what? Resistance to bending moment. Yes. So it's going to tell you that how much resistance the cross section has. This number, that 1, 1, 1, 1, 10, 0.18 times 10 to the power 6, is tell you that much resistance against the moment because this guy don't want to bend. It has some resistance. And that resistance is represented by 110.18. The more numbers you get, it is very difficult to bend. Right. So I think we can calculate this uh, section modulus Z. Elastic section modulus Z is equal to I on Y, which is 110.18 times 10 raised to the power 6 millimeter power 4 on Y 150 millimeters. All good. So uh, elastic, sorry, yield moment. My is equal to sigma y times z. Sigma y is 210, 210 megapascals times by Say one three four five five zero millimeter cube. Megapascals, millimeters. Does they go together? You know what I mean. When you multiply, it should have consistence unit. What is megapascals in what is that? Megapascals. What megapascals equal to? How much? Me? Meter square four. Yeah, meter square. OK, 210 meter square. Yep. Newton's up like this. One Pascals. Physics, right? Pascals. Do you remember Pascals? Mm -hmm. One Pascals, one Newton per millimeter meter square. One mega pascals. Mega. When you go by USB, megabyte, gigabyte. You said megabyte, but you don't know what is the actual meaning of megabytes. So mega meaning? One mega pascals. Mega, 10 to the power 6. So I put 10 to the power 6 Newton per meter square. Do you understand that? Now this guy is sitting in the millimeters. So we can't take it into the meter. Or we need to change these guys to the meter cube, vice versa, whatever you like. But we need consistency. So for that case, I want to change this one into millimeter square. Do you agree with that? One meter equal to thousand millimeter. So two times thousand. So one megapascals. Do you agree? You understand? Or kind of? I think you have not done the assignment. In the assignment, there were a lot of tricks there. Gigapascals, megapascals, you need to be consistent there. Otherwise, your answer would be not meaningful. Okay, so 
so one mega pascals is equal to one newton per when i was undergraduate i don't understand either <laughs> so it was difficult for me my lecturer sit down for half an hour and he said you are in the year three and you stole was was hard for me it's, it's not straightforward so from that day i make sure all my units are right okay so that's all good uh, we can cancel that and we can multiply you got 154 255 500 newton millimeters divide by thousands to get it in kilo newtons and that's no Tell me if you don't understand. First thousand to make it Newton into kilo Newtons. Second thousands to make it millimeter in millimeter into meter. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. Sorry, say it again. What do you say about the Stirling challenge? This is Newton. Yep. Divide by thousand, that makes it kilo Newton. Yep. Millimeter, this divide, millimeter divided by thousand meter. Understand? Okay. All right. All right. So first answer is done. This is your M Y ill moment. Plastic moment. Ill strength times plastic section modulus S. Now for these cross sections here, Okay, what would be the area? That is your total area. Do you agree? Now we need to find axis where it's gonna divide the equal area. So let's say this axis at a distance of some distance h. Then we don't know where this axis is, plastic neutral axis, where your area would be equal. OK, you know this concept, right? Let's say this is the axis. This could be anywhere here. This is h. That will divide your whole cross section into two equal parts. OK? So total area that I calculate this 100 times 300 take away these 270, then this is your total area. We need half of that one. Do you understand this? The half area at the top and bottom would be 5550 millimeter square. So we need to draw the line where top one 5550 millimeter square and bottom one 5550 millimeter square. Millimeter square. Okay, that's the that's the goal, right? So let's say I have this hedge. So let's say this top part is here, this part, and this part that we divide it. Okay, we don't know how much hedge. Okay. So in that case, let's say this is the area, 5550 five, five, millimeter square. What is that area? This H1, the H that I drew, the line, this area has 5550 five, five, millimeter square. Do you agree with me? Because that is the half, and I know that hex area is 5550 five, five, millimeter square. 
equal to this guy is 100 times 15 right? because you have 100 and thickness is 50 100 times 15 right you okay and this plus these guys is um, h minus 15 times 15 do you agree with that this is 15 so this is h minus 15 times 15 and that's again one more this side so these guys is 100 times 15 this one h minus 15 times 15 this is h minus 15 times 15 you okay all good so in that case Okay, it's a symmetric, so therefore it's give you 150 again. But if it's non-symmetric, we can follow the same procedures. Do you understand? Does it answer your questions? How do we find the line where it's gonna divide the equal? All right, so now once you know this one, uh, plastic neutral axis, Distance is 150. This is 100. This one total 300. This is 70. This is 270, right? Now let's divide these whole things into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? You understand this? What kind of? Yeah, they could be one area, but to have a, to have it smooth, and some students may not be able to imagine. Just make it at the moment, at the start, when you have a lot of practice, we can go back. Okay. Right. But you're right. One and six are same. Two, but that is because your neutral axis is plastic neutral sitting exactly in the middle. So not all cross sections will have these fortunate uh, plastic neutral axis going from 150. In that case, you need to do this, right? And sometimes complicated. So it's just just go with the flow. All right. So six one. So plastic neutral axis is a one y one, a two y two, a three y three. A4, Y4, A5, Y5, A6, Y6. Okay? So area 1, 100 times 15. Y1, from this distance from here, that would be 150. 150, take away 15, divide by 2. One forty two point five. Do you understand? Fifteen divided by two because that's the centroid of the first cross section, and the distance from centroid of that cross section to the plaster neutral axis is y one. A two, these guys here. So this would be one hundred and fifty. Take away fifteen give you 135 so this is your area and that is y1 is 142.5 right 
area two is 135 times 15 and this distance is 135 divided by 2. Understand that? Same thing for third one. 135 15 times 135 by 2. Fourth one same. Sixth one same. And this last one would be this. And take always y positive. Okay. <coughs> Does that mean the below neutral axis is below plastic neutral axis is your is your negative? Take always y positive. Okay. So how many you got? If one and six are same, one and six are same. These one, two, three, and four. Another four are same. Right, and if you use the calculator, Stop me if you don't understand any of these numbers that where it is coming from. All good. So MP equal to sigma Y times S 210 Newton per millimeter square. One megapascals is one Newton per millimeter square. If you know now. 974 250 millimeter cube Tell me if you don't understand. <coughs> All good. Safe factor. MP over MY. If it is sigma Y times S over sigma Y times Z, sigma Y, sigma Y cancels, you can have a plastic section modulus over elastic section modulus. That's another definition as well. Or you can do MP over MY, both same. So let's do MP over MY, 204.59 kilonewton meter, mm, 154.3. What this factor telling me that if you design our cross sections by only the yield theory, sigma b is equal to m y or we are not using like utilizing 33 <coughs> percent of the capacity of the cross sections. <coughs> so by using our plastic moment, we have about 33 percent extra strength that we are not wasting it. Right? As I mentioned in old days. You see the massive, you see this Bendigo CPD, you see those information center and all. You don't see anything, it's just bulk of everything. The strong walls and columns are massive and so on, right? But 
if you look at the modern structures, the cross sections are very tiny, slim. Okay, thanks to these plastic moments that we use, that we want to use these 30 percent capacity, and it's still safe. Okay, it's not that we are compromising the safety. So everyone understand? Elastic section modulus, plastic section modulus, ill moment, plastic moments, plastic neutral electrolysis, elastic neutral electrolysis, and so on. Okay. Let's do another example. Same procedure, by the way. There is not much difference. Any questions? If you stop me, if you don't understand any of this, can we move on to the second one? Okay, is a T beam now? Cross section is T. So it just wants to find the safe factors. Safe factors is equal to MP over MY. Look at yield strength is not given. So let's assume there is the same yield strength for S, Z, same sigma Y. Assume. Understand that? So we need to find only plastic modulus and elastic modulus. And if you take a ratio, it will give you the safe factors. And you understand what the safe factors can tell you? It's going to tell us how much efficiency we can utilize if you use plastic moments. All of our oscillation standards design based on MP, not MY. All right, let's do the elastic modulus first. All right. I think this is not symmetric section, so we need to find a centroid and we need to find the elastic uh, neutral axis. What's the cross sections look like? 150 by 10. And this one 200, so 190 by C1. Right? So let's find centroid for center of gravity CG. Right? There is an, if there are, let's say this is area one or section one and this is section two. Then let's say Y bar. We don't know where is the Y bar. Let me maybe somewhere here. We don't know. For that, we need to take a reference axis. Let's take a reference axis here. We need to measure it from somewhere, either top or bottom. No, no rules. You can do it top or bottom. Okay, and this Y bar we don't know. We need to find that where the points that the center of gravity is there. So Y bar is equal to A1 Y1 plus A2 Y2. Have you done this one or you forget? 
mechanics of sorry forget okay no worries so you understand this equation a1 y1 a2 y2 over a1 plus a2 it's going to tell us where the center of center of gravity okay centroid of the whole cross section is a center point so if you take a rectangle or square if you just draw a line here like this you know this is a center right but this is unsymmetric so we can't you can just use these rules if you have a circle here if you just draw two line this is your cg right we are but this is t meaning it's not symmetric so in that case we need to find that cg so area one 150 millimeters times by 10 millimeters times by the distance y1 from the rest reference point do you understand that that is the centroid of your section one and measuring from the reference point so that would be 200 take away 5 would be 195 do you understand that because this whole cross section is 200 and this one is 10 half of 10 is 5 200 take away 5 is 195 plus area 2 190 times 7 this is your area times by this centroid would be 190 this is your y2 and that is 190 divided by 2 uh, let's put the value 25 Understand that? One forty-eight millimeters from the bottom line. The reference axis one forty-eight. This is the point where your elastic neutral axis is gonna pass. What is elastic neutral axis? Elastic neutral axis is the line where you have a transition between tension and compression. When you bend it, it will just going to draw the elastic neutral axis and that is the elastic neutral axis and elastic neutral axis is going to pass from the 148 millimeter line okay <clears throat> any questions so if i want to find the uh, uh, elastic section modulus So we need to find I first. So same thing for I is equal to let's say I1 plus I2. Okay, one for cross section one. I1 is equal to BD cubed over 12 plus A distance square. Have you seen that right? Moment of inertia forget but i can remind you that let's say this is let's draw it up here again Okay, so first one BD cubed over 12 
150 times d cubed over 12 plus area 150 times 10. Now this distance is the distance from the centroid. Centroid of that cross section one to the centroid of the whole body. Do you understand that? This distance D is the distance from the centroid of your whole body to this one. So if I want to find this distance, probably I need to find this distance. Take away this distance will give me this one. It's a parallel axis theorem. What is parallel axis theorem? Because last time, <coughs> now you might ask, what happened when you calculate this, this rectangle? You just did the BD cubed over 12, right? You did not do this one in the last examples. Obvious question. Do you agree with me that in the There was no a dy. It's still there because your centroid of the cross section and centroid of the whole body is in the same point, so distance d is zero. I1 is equal to bd cubed over 12 plus a d squared. This d is zero because this is the centroid of the whole body and this is the centroid of cross section, so the distance d is zero there. But in here, in here, in the section one, you can see the centroid of this one, and the centroid of the whole body is here. So you have some distance between two cross sections. Very, you are by the way finding the uh, moment of inertia about this point. Okay, so you need to find this distance where you want to find the moment of inertia. Does it make sense or kind of? Okay, so um, I think this distance is how much? 300 take over 140. Um, <coughs> 200 take over 148. Dash distance is 52. This distance is 52. So this distance would be 52. Take over 5. I think 47. Understand that? So this distance from center of the whole body to the center of the one is 47 square. So if I just solve this one, Same thing, we do it for two. So this is would be 190 divided by two, 95. So distance D is equal to 190 divided by 2, take away 148. 95 take away 148. It is always positive.
you can stop me if you don't understand any of the number that. <coughs> yes, please. It's the 47 plus the 42 and then half of the top one. So, which one? Oh, 47. So how do I get 47? Yeah. yeah, okay. So, so we want to find the distance between the centroid of the number one yeah. to the centroid of the whole body. Oh, gotcha. I know the centroid of the whole body is 148. We found that 148 millimeters. So 200 take away 148 is the 52. So this is 200. Do you understand 52? Mm -hmm. Because this whole thing is 200. 200 take away 148 is 52. 52 is the distance from the top to the centroid of the whole body. Now I know this 52. 52 take away this 5 will give me this. Do you understand? So 52 take away 5, which is this 5, will give me this 47. Or kind of, no? Yeah. Understand? Yeah. Does it really matter if you put negative 53? That total will give you the same answer. Minus 53 times minus yeah. 53 is positive answer. But it doesn't matter. They do write it as 53. Yeah, I just, uh, the, if I do 140, <coughs> that should be positive, but it doesn't matter. Do you understand this 53 as well, or I just want to let them go through it? Yeah. So, again, this is a centroid of the whole body, which is 148 from the reference point here. Now, this is the centroid of the section number two, which is 190 divided by two, which is 95. So this distance is 95. So 148, take away 95, will give you this one, 53. All good? <coughs> now, once you know this, all the distance, now you can have elastic section modulus. Z, I over Y. Right? Now, someone might ask, how come you just put 148? Why not another one? Because there are two y distances, right? Because if you look at this, There are two extreme fibers. One is here, another one is here. Do you agree with me that I could take y equal to 52? There is the rule saying 148 only. Right? Do you agree with me that <coughs> z can be found using 148 and z can get? Now it depends again what you are designing. Let's say for the reinforced concrete beam. Concrete is not good in compressors. Right? So for that case, if you are designing the reinforced concrete beam, their compression style is in here, and you are mostly looking for a compression region. That's what you are interested in. In that case, you take it 148. In the case of steel, if you are designing this steel beam, tensile is a problem, Buckley. So in that case, you take it 52. So it's depending on which one you're designing. If you are uh, designing the steel beam in the building, you will calculate the Z equal to divide by 52 and you continue your design. If you're designing this another one, you will take this one. When you come in the SP2, we will not ask you to do all this one. We have a ready document that we're going to use that I'm going to show you. 
Now you might get angry on me that why you make us all to do this one because this is Australian supplier, one still. This is a supplier that supply all these beams in your in your one. And they and we're going to use this catalog by the way. Let's say if you go to the universal beam, <coughs> universal beam, they have give you all the value. Look at this. Sx for all your cross sections, z value about x axis, y axis. We're going to read from these tables when you come in the ST2. We're not going to go through this whole process. We don't want you to just blindly read. We want to know where these numbers come from. What is the methods? Because if you are designing your own cross section, because this is standard, is um, this is standard. Is you can change it. You, supp you supply, you can say, I want 610 UB 125, they will send you standard fix. But someone asks you to have your own dimension, you have own, you make it your own beam. It's possible that you can have a plate, you have this plate, you have this plate, you have this plate, you weld it, you make your own cross section, your own standard width and all. In that case, you need to calculate this. So you should have a knowledge of both that you can able to read these tables. Don't worry about these tables. Uh, it's not part of this subject, but I just want you to feel that uh, it's not your whole thing that you were cutting you, but I want you to have background. When you come in the tables, I will not want to teach you what is SX, what is Z, what is SY, and, and so on, and how its number come from. Right? So this whole procedure, they done it for you in the background. Someone like you, engineer sitting in a one still, company they have done the calculation and they provide it okay so <clears throat> when we design you the ready value okay okay so we have done this and you understand 148 and 52 right okay now we will have a we will calculate this plastic section modulus which is denoted by s you, did you see that s therefore i am look at this s z s z s i am I'm, 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 I'm following this one so when you come back in sd2 i don't need to set you up and say where is my s and where is my z okay straight away you go back we are recording if you forget Put the headphone and uh, listen these two hours and come back. I know everything. All right. So therefore, we just use S and Z. All right. <coughs> Plastic section modulus. We have one challenge. One challenge meaning we need to find the axis where we're going to divide. This is plastic neutral axis. Let's take this reference. Reference here. Again, same reference. Okay, let's assume this is a distance H. Uh, by the way, we need to have a one, one simple uh, hint here because the plastic neutral axis could be here or could be here. If I do it here, then it will be more work. But let me let me give you the hint. What is this section? 150 by 10. And this is C1 by 190, right? So what is the area for this one, the top one, which is 150 by 10, 1500 millimeter square. What is the area for this bottom part, which is 1330? Now, look at this. So the, this part is 1500, this part is 1300. We need to borrow something from here to make this guy to close to close to the 1500. So we need to extract, we need to take a little bit of strip from here to make this one close to 1500. Do you agree with me? So by logic, I would say that plastic neutral axis might go from here. Do you understand? Or kind of? Because you have 1500, if I this one little bit wide, 
10 millimeter, 12 millimeters, this will just come down, I think, right? Because if this area is 1600, then we need to borrow from here. Right? So by the logic, <coughs> I would say that I would have a plastic neutral axis going from here. We don't know where, but that's that's that may be sitting somewhere. Do you agree? Now, what would be the total area? Total area is one three zero zero millimeter square plus one five zero zero millimeter square. You get two eight three zero millimeter square. So the half of the area okay do you agree so this half 150 by times by this one equal to 1415 do you agree and this distance could be 200 take away h Right. This one here, little part, is 200 take away edge. Right. Because the whole part is 200, and this little part is 200 take away edge. So, 1 for 1, 5 millimeter square equal to 200 hedge times by 150. Yes, any question? Why is it 200 minus h times 150? If you're talking about half of the area equals... It could be this, or it could be this. Uh, why would I make my life easy by taking this one? Why couldn't you do 10 minus h? No, 10 minus h would be, if I have 10, Oh, Minus H, H is the whole thing. Where is the H? Would you take H? For, could you take H from the top then? No rules. You can do it ten from H from the top. There is no rules. I know. Walks off uh, and election or is take from top. Right and pull take from the bottom. It doesn't matter. If someone said what is from the top, you just two hundred take away this number. I'll give you from the top. Right? 200 take away h will give you this distance. But how do I know whether I should take it from top or bottom? There is no rules. Right? You, you just need a reference success from where you can do all the calculations. Because I done the first calculation from bottom, I continue from the bottom. And I intentionally take this one so you don't copy from the lecture notes and you focus here. All right, so all good so far. This is the axis where your area will be divided. Now, section moment is equal to area y1 plus area y2. One ninety point fifty seven. This distance nine point forty three. 
So area one, 150 by 10. Distance Y1. Which one don't understand? How did the mm. elastic neutral axis and um, the elastic neutral axis differ? If you're talking about the center and they both use the area to calculate it. Elastic neutral axis is dividing your area into compression and tension zone. And which one elastic? Elastic neutral axis is the axis which is passing from the center of gravity, that is the one definition. Mm -hmm. It's also dividing your tension and compression zone. That is your elastic neutral axis. When your beam is in elastic region only. When you keep loading it, then if you just yield all the cross sections, then you talking about plastic neutral axis. Mm -hmm. When you do the plastic neutral axis, your cross section should be in equilibrium. All the compression force equal to all the tension force. Otherwise, your beam is moving because when you have elastic if you release it it will come back to the original position but it, hmm. isn't isn't it in equilibrium in elastic no equilibrium no you know in equilibrium because it's just it's that, that sigma b is equal to m y on i that equations that we derive that is based on elastic theory so in that in that theory we don't have equilibrium problem in elastic in the plastic only we have equilibrium because you are permanently deforming the cross axis so you make sure that all the compression force equal to the tension force so therefore plastic neutral axis and elastic neutral axis are two different all right so so far so good and the safe factors, last one. Seventy nine percent capacity we are utilizing if we use this plastic one. Any questions? I think you understand the story now.
we need to calculate the plastic moment of the sections we need to calculate the safe factors of course we need to calculate the uh, yield moment as well because we need to calculate the safe factors right so safe factor equal to plastic moment over yield moment yield moment is equal to sigma y times z plastic moment is equal to sigma y times s z is equal to i over y elastic section modulus for that we need to find the i and distance y i we need to find the center of gravity we need to find i1 i2 i3 we need to find y s same procedures long one all right let's do it we have half an hour so it's a little bit quick but you can stop me if you don't understand any of the part 75, 15, 15, 15, right? Okay, I calculate A1, Y1, A2, Y2, A3, Y3. Anything you don't understand? Any numbers? Um, oh, yes. How do you get Y2? Centroid of this part of the reference point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. 270 divided by 2, so it would be here. Yes. From this point to this one, it would yeah. be 150. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you find the centroid of this one would be 270 divided by 2, yeah. which is this. Plus and plus 15, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because you're measuring Y2 from the reference point. If your reference point at bottom, you measure it from bottom. Yeah. Plus by centroid, from the centroid to the reference point.
So once you know this, all centroid y bar, a1, y1, Centroid, where your neutral axis is going to pass. Elastic neutral axis. Once you know this elastic neutral axis, 191.91, we're going to calculate the moment of inertia.
Which one? D. D is the trouble. Can you play my yes? the last one? The, the last. The, I3? Um, yeah, D3. D3, okay. This is the point. Yeah, yeah. And reference is here. From <laughs> yeah. all the way to here, take away this, we'll give you this. Yeah. Same procedure. We did not change since the, our first example. Yeah, I, I, I've already found it. <laughs> now you just need to practice. No oh, worry. Yes, yes. Just double checking. Yes. If you take, you should get the same answer for your total Y if you take your references at the bottom or the top, yes? Yes, I still give the same answer. Okay, because they, we're going from the top and the yeah, answer going from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, but they give you the same answer. Right? Yeah, same answer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, therefore I purposefully take the other way. Yeah. The other way. So otherwise, you look at the solution and you just say, okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. I won't need anything from the screen. It's better or I think it will not convince everything. It's it's lot of lot of direct steps, you know. Yeah. It is. Guys. Yep. Yeah. That the calculation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not explaining everything, therefore I'm here mm -hmm. to elaborate more. <clears throat> but after these lectures, if you read the lecture notes, you might have, have some understanding. Yeah. But one hour and 45 minutes before, if you look at the lecture notes and say, what's going on? That's a lot of numbers. All right. So everyone okay with what I? So, um, Elastic section modulus z is equal to i over y. Now, generally, this I beam used in the steel. Right? Before, T section was used in the concrete, but this one used in the steel. Look at that one. We don't make a concrete beam like this. Have you seen the concrete beam making like this one? No, because it's very difficult to cast. You know, cast meaning you the concrete is weight. You need to have a timber formwork made on in that shape, and you need to pour it, and it will be expensive. So we don't make concrete beam in the I shape. We use it in the steel beam only. For that case, we're going to worry about the 
tension because there will be buckle in the tension. So therefore, we're taking the y value from the top because top fibers are in concept. Okay. So therefore, we're going to take 191 point something. Understand? But in the exam or in the assignment or something, it does not tell you, you assume the the which means you wants to. But you understand, right? You you got the point how, how to take y. So 108.01 times 10 raised to 6 millimeter power 4 over y 191.91 millimeter. <coughs> if you want to calculate the uh, yield moment, yield times 10z, 300 megapascals. can stop me, I can go bigger steps and explain you a few stuff on that. Okay, so yield moment calculate. Now we can calculate plastic moment. Yes, I can go back. Where? More, more, more. There, okay.
you okay which one I'm trying to figure out how you went from how you I went from what the unit which is not working in my head. That has to be so, unit. so the unit uh, mega Pascal is newton per millimeter square and this is meter yeah. two, so should be okay. Well, I was like, I'm just gonna figure that out for a second. All good? Yeah. So we found the plastic neutral axis. Now we will going to find S. A1, Y1, plus A2, Y2, plus A3, Y3, area 1 is 1125, Y1 is, this hatch is 237.5 millimeter. <coughs> so this one is 7.5. Seven point five take away seven point five millimeter. A two eight times by 